In this video, I'm going to explain how you can use psychological priming to manipulate other people. Now, this is a second video in a short little video series I'm doing on psychological priming. The first one was more about what priming is. If you haven't done so already, uh, press that link up there and go watch that video. The third video will be out really soon, so I'm placing a link for that below this video as well. The first thing I want to say is that maybe you noticed that I've actually used a subtle form of priming in the first video I did, but also in this one. If you figured out what it is already, please leave a comment below this video and tell me what it is. Now, if you haven't, I'm going to tell you right now. Well, first of all, I'm sitting here talking about a psychological phenomenon, right? And I do so wearing a blazer, wearing a dark sweater. I have a pair of glasses lying here. These are my actual glasses and a mug, right? I also have a university diploma over here and I have a books, bookshelf in the background. I also have some art. Now, all of this is things that typically activate a mental category in people's minds that <laughs> that places me in a category as an intellectual, as a scholar, in a sense, maybe even as some sort of authority. And when you use priming to manipulate others or yourself, remember this. It is all about activating categories in other people's minds. So by saying, yeah, so if I, if, if you could close your eyes and I had said blazer, glasses, books, university diploma, coffee mug, you would have probably already thought along the lines of academia, right? So that's the general concept of it. And the reason it works is that even though the people listening to you or seeing you know that you're giving them these stimuli, I'm just referring to these objects as stimuli right now, whatever behavior they exert, whatever action they take after you introduce your stimulus or your stimuli is unconscious. And if you can manipulate people's unconscious behavior, you are well on your way to become a very influential person, a good marketeer, a good speaker, and many other things. And as a businessman or woman, that is really a crucial skill to possess. Priming can be used in any and every social situation. For instance, when you enter a room with strangers, it doesn't really matter whether it's a job interview, whether it's negotiations, pitching, an audition, dating, and also social media. I do realize we're not in the same room right now, but in a sense we are, right? I am entering your room and right now we're strangers, at least most of us are. So, right, so that's when you could use this. But you can also use it when you create ads or advertising campaign campaigns. So it has to do with the words you use, but it also has to do with photos or visual clues and even music. So there's a lot of different um, things up in the air right here, right? But you can, but you don't have to focus on all of them at once. You really just need to use, for instance, a few words to activate a mental category in someone's mind. And the important takeaway, again, is that whatever schema, whatever category you manage to activate in people's mind will, will 100% influence the actions they take afterwards. Now, as I did in the first video, I've created a little manipulation segment, so let's see how it works. So what I want you to do is just look at the photos that will be presented now, and once we reach the final photo, I want you to fill in the missing letters and tell me, say out loud the word it spells. Now, I'm guessing that you arrived at the word dark. But that is really not a given. If people are shown other photos such as these I'm showing you right now, book and some glasses, and this guy, this guy with a chessboard, more glasses, you might as well have arrived at dork. And that is what a lot of research has demonstrated. And keep in mind that this study has also been done, been done with words where people were basically shown a, a list with words that all had to do with nighttime. And the same time with if you show people uh, words that have to do with medical stuff and you ask them to fill out some blanks, it's easier for people to come up with the word nurse, for instance, even though they only have the first and the last letter. So it works. Uh, it works with activating these mental categories, but you can use it with words. You can use it with photos. Let 
let me give you two examples of where you can use it practically. Now, let's say you sell some sort of product online. Your main way of selling this product is by having people led to a landing page and then you show them a video. Now, at the end of the video, they're shown, they basically have to decide, you want to buy this, yes or no, right? So let's say in this promotional video that you show people, you show them people such as this icon or this woman or, you know, this and this or this or this, right? And if you subsequently ask them, take action now, question mark, and they have to press a yes button that leads to a sales page, you know, they can punch in their credit card information, or no, which will lead them back to the landing page of your website or something like that. You, I'm, I'm sure you can see how this can create a, it's basically activating a schema in the minds of people telling them, yes, or take action, yes, or I do, right, or something like that. And this works in many ways, but just compare them to, okay, let's say, uh, let's say something that signals something completely else, right, robots, right? Let's, if you show, you, show them this or that, or whatever it could be, or death and decay and war and people that look negative, they are much less inclined to say yes, they are much more inclined to say no, of course. That is just food for thought. Of course, this is very I know, this is very superficial and very obvious, right? But but it's true. There's a reason why people in sales videos are almost always happy. The other situation where you can use this knowledge is the situation where you meet people that you haven't met before, or even if you have met them before. But let's say you're going for a job interview or on a date or something like that. It's really important what the first words that come out of your mouth are, right? For instance, let's say it's been raining on your way there. And if you say, oh my God, the weather has been so horrible. I'm completely soaked. I'm just, ugh. You know what I mean? You've activated a category in their minds, a schema. And that category has to do with wet, negative, horrible. It's not a good category. It's not a good foundation for their subsequent evaluation or reception of whatever it is you have to tell them. Same thing goes for a date. You've probably been on a date where you uh, you show up to this date and you just get this weird kind of undefinable sensation that the person you're meeting up with is just so negative right but it doesn't actually have to be that they're negative if they use the wrong words or the right words or whatever th that may be the explanation of this sensation they almost they're giving away this negative sensation just because of the words they say because they trigger mental categories in your mind but if you go to a job interview or on a date or whatever and the first things you say are are Oh my God, this rainy weather, it, it just makes me so, it makes me so vibrant. It just makes me feel alive. I'm, I'm actually always performing more when it rains. I know it's a little counterintuitive, but it really just makes me happy. If those are the first words, you know, that come out of your mouth, you, you use the word vibrant, you use the word, I don't know, you can use whatever words you want to, but just make sure that you use at least, I'd say at least three words if you can more that fit in the same category and the category that you activate should obviously be something that has to do with whatever it is you want to gain from this meeting so the words you use matter but also the way you dress matter now i mentioned that the priming can also be used in social media and one of the ways that you can do it is for instance by the way you're dressing obviously we already talked about how you can use specific words but you can also activate mental categories just as i tried to do with my glasses my blazer my diploma my books etc you can do the same thing now if you want to come across as an authority in theory, you can wear a lab coat or you can wear a suit or you can wear glasses or whatever you think people perceive. If you, yes, if you can activate this category of authority, you can even wear like a military uniform or something like that. It gives you authority, even though people might think, why is he wearing his military uniform? That's ridiculous. Why? He's doing a YouTube video. But 
the effect will still be there. Whatever subsequent thoughts they have, whatever subsequent stimuli uh, they experience, they will be affected by having seen you as an authority in that uniform. You've activated a mental schema, a mental category in their mind. And you can do it the same way. It doesn't have to have to do with authority. It can have to do with relatability. That's big on social media. If you're young, if you're t speaking to other people, if you're trying to get more subscribers to whatever social media you run, if you alienate yourself from them, if people can't relate to you, you might have a hard time gaining traction. But if you have like a pretty solid um, idea of how your target group looks, if they're young, maybe they're like very casual. So maybe obviously you should probably wear like a tank top and a cap, a rever reverse cap and um, a hoodie or what do I know? But something that's in sync, something that places you in a category that will benefit you once you once they meet you, so to speak. So that was a little bit about how you can use psychological priming to manipulate other people. In the third video in this series, I'm going to talk about how you can use priming to manipulate yourself. Maybe it sounds a little odd, but it's really not. So stay tuned for that. And also, please subscribe. Oh, one second. I, uh, yeah, I was going to show you the photos with the ah and all that stuff. So please subscribe, guys. And uh, why not press the little bell icon as well? It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. It helps me out a lot. So thanks a lot. And Stay tuned for more spiritual capitalism. Thanks for watching. Cheers.